بسم اللہ والصلاۃ والسلام علیہ رسول اللہ بقرعید از نیئرنگ اینڈ دس کوشچن کمز اپ ایوری ٹائم عید الاضحیٰ از اپ کمنگ سو آئی وانٹ ٹو ایڈریس دس ویری کوکلی اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو کیپ اٹ شارٹ اینڈ سویٹ اینڈ آئی ایم ناٹ گونا گوئنگ ٹو دا ٹیکنیکل جوریس پروڈنس ڈیٹیلس آئی ایم ناٹ گونا ٹاک اباؤٹ دا نیٹی گریٹیز آف دا میٹر جسٹ جنرلی گوئنگ ٹو ایڈریس the issue whether it is better to give this money of qurbani of of uh, of this dhabiha uh, to someone instead of doing the qurbani yourself is it really mandatory for every muslim to do so or is it just a um, a story that we are free either to follow or not to follow so uh, join me for today's um, short podcast and let's begin in the name of allah Okay, so this is Surah Safat. I'm going to go to the origin and going to tell you why the animal sacrifice in the first place in Islam. So let's look at this. This is Surah Safat. This is Surah Ibrahim saying, وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ Abraham said, I'm going to immigrate to my Lord and leave the city of my people so that I'm able to worship him. My Lord will guide me to whatever is good for me in the world and in the hereafter. Ila Rabbi sayahdeen, inshallah, Allah will guide me. Rabbi habli min as salihin my Lord, grant me a child from among the righteous. Fabasharnahu bi ghulamin halim. So we gave him good tidings of a forbearing boy. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعَهُ مَعَهُ السَّعِيَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أَذْبَحُكْ فَانْذُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ And this is Ismail alayhi salam, the, the son that was bestowed upon, bestowed upon Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam one day said, and when he reached with him the age of exertion, he said, O oh my son, indeed I have seen in a dream that I must sacrifice you. So see what you think. He said, O oh my father, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. O oh my father, do as you are commanded. You will find me, if Allah wills, of the steadfast. So, tajiduni insha'Allah min as-sabirin. Falamma aslama wa tallahu lil-jabeen. So when they submitted to Allah, when both of them submitted themselves to Allah's will, and He laid him on His forehead, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ We call to him, O Abraham, قَدْ صَدَقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. You have fulfilled the vision. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ Indeed, this was the clear trial. So this is the story of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhum as Now there are a lot of people who say, oh, but this is a biblical narration. This is not like this in the Quran. But this is there right in front of your eyes. It is being told that Allah showed this in a dream to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam told this to his son, Ismail alayhi salam. Ismail alayhi salam said, Whatever you see, a father, O oh father, do it. I will, inshallah, be min as sabirin. I will not um, say no if Allah is asking me to do this. So when he laid him down on his forehead, Allah said, okay. O oh Ibrahim, this is not to be done in reality, in actuality. We were just taking a test of you. This was just a test onto you. So I ask you, I turn around and ask you, what do you think happened when Allah said this? What do you think happened next? Hmm? That is not in the text of the Quran what happened next. 
the animal sacrifice part. But when we go to Tariq, we don't necessarily go to Bible and biblical studies. We go to Tariq. Ibn Khuldun, Ibn Kathir ha have these, uh, this incident narrated. We learned that you know, uh, a, uh, a goat was uh, sacrificed instead of Ismail alayhi salam. So this is the tradition, this is the Sunnat Ibrahim that is kept alive by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now all the schools of jurisprudence are unanimous upon this. Is it fard on a Muslim? No, it is wajib. If somebody has the means, every, listen, every badni uh, ibadah, every physical ritual of, in Islam is absolutely mandatory and there is no escape from it. So, saum, salah, there is no escape, no excuse for it. But every mali ibadah, Every ritual that has to do with the, uh, with the monetary side of affairs, there is a rukhsa, a ijaza for the Muslims. If they are not able to fulfill that, if their financial situation is not as such to permit them to do so, to indulge into that ritual, it is not further on them, it is not wajib on them um, at all. So zakat, you only give zakat if you have nisab if you have that specific amount of money. Some scholars say that you do sacrifice by the same measurement of nisab. If you are sahibun nisab, if zakat is fard on you, then dabiha is fard on you as well. Some scholars say no, even if you are not sahibu zakat, sahibun nisab, even if you don't give zakat, if zakat is not fard on you, you're not that wealthy, you still should, if the money is with you in those days, you should still go ahead with the dhabiha. Now, everything has become about impressing others in today's society. People come to me all the time and say, sir, what is the benefit of this now? Kul inna, sal inna, inna nusuki wa salati wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. It is in the Quran that Allah does not receive the bones or the blood of the animal that we have sacrificed. He only receives the purity of heart. So today, people do it to show off. Well, everything has become like that. Even Salah, there are people who do Hajj, there are people who give Zakat, there are people who go to mosque just for show off. So should we do away with every ritual of Islam? This is not a dalil, this is not an argument for it. This is something that is not even from taqlid. It, taqlid has nothing to do with it. Every jurist agrees on this, that this is wajib on a Muslim who can do so, who has the money, who has the means to go ahead with it. This is a ritual of Islam. This is a major, major, major ritual of Islam that has a lot of scientific benefits for the ecosystem. Because when you have a lot of livestock, when you do this uh, sacrifice, animal sacrifice, it balances the ecosystem. So it has those benefits as well, scientific benefits. And then as a ritual, it is an azim ritual of Islam. It is a huge, uh, one of the most honored rituals in Islam. So you can't just do away with it by putting forward a faulty logic, a fallacy, that because there is an element of show off in it, so we should do away with this. But if you are bringing an argument that instead of doing this, give this money to somebody who is deserving, you should do that around the clock. You should do that around the year. If you have money on you and somebody else in your neighborhood, in your family is in need of that money, you should give them that money. You should be doing this not just once a year on Eid al-Adha. What kind of an argument is that? So please, guys, let's be reasonable. This is a ritual of Islam. Every jurist agrees upon this. There is no disagreement amongst the jurists. We have sound hadith traditions. We have sound sahih, mutawatira hadith, in which uh, we have reports that this has been uh, done in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and after the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Sahaba and so it is a ritual of Islam which is um, authenticated and goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is Sunnat Ibrahim this is in fact something that nobody can negate because this is Sunnat Ibrahim 
It predates the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is in the Quran. This is not the time to indulge in the exegesis of the Quran. I'm not giving a lecture on, on, on Quran right now. But I can show you from the text of the Quran that this is a mu'jizah. This is a sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salam that has been kept alive by Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So whomsoever uh, from you has this uh, capacity and ability and capability, financial otherwise, of going ahead with the, with the zabiha, please do so. And don't keep all the meat for yourself. It is better to give away all the meat, in fact. But uh, uh, according to the jurisprudence, to the law, to Islamic law, uh, the most you can keep for yourself is one third. So you can keep one third and then you have to give the rest away. One third to uh, your relatives, one third to the ones you don't know, and one third for your own self. So. Let's end on this dua. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa barik lana fi ma aatayt. Fa inna ka taqdi sharra ma qadayt. Fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. Innahu la yadhillu man walayta wa la ya'izzu man aadayta. Tabarak ta rabbana wa ta'alayt wa la man ja minnak illa ilayk. لبيك اللهم لبيك. لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك. Inna alhamda. والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته